Welcome back to the Queer Sister Podcast. My name is Jasmine, and uh, my pronouns are she, her. I'm Natasha, and I go by she, her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, today we wanted to talk about a specific television show that was kind of popular in, like, the early 2000s. I I wanted to bring it up because there are a lot of other shows out there that... I think has helped queer people of a certain generation sort of like help identify themselves or help um, just discover more things about themselves. So what is that show, Natasha? (laughs) Um, To be, to be quite honest, I'm like, now I'm like thinking about this topic that we're, you know, we're talking about, did you even watch the show or at this point, I feel like this show is just you to prompt something and then for me to talk. Okay. No, here's if the, the thing. If so, the audience is fine with I'm, I don't need to be yelling into the camera. Sorry. If the audience is fine with it, that's great. But I don't want to be the person who they think like, oh, this girl is just talking and talking, but I love to talk. So if you <laughs> give me, if you give me the chance, I'll talk. But anyway, so I want I want to preference that there are shows out there that I have watched through you. You will watch a show, and then uh, will sort of like tell me like the parts that I've missed. So I'll watch like that's now. This show was when you were in high school. I've always done that though. So I would like you know even when uh, like you, you were in your school. emo days. I don't think we were talking much. <laughs> I don't think we're talking about it. The show started, I looked at it, the show started in 2005. So you were already in high school. I mm-hmm. was, uh, I guess, what is it? When did it start? Uh, you were junior high, right? So it, was, it was started when I was in sixth grade because it was November of mm-hmm. 2005. So I was in sixth grade and it ended at the end of 2008. So throughout my whole junior high experience was this show. The show we're talking about today is South of Nowhere. Now, if you... <laughs> were or if you're a millennial like a young millennial or uh, one of the that that mid gen z millennial section and you're queer you watch south of nowhere unless you didn't have cable but south of nowhere is a show that was on it started off on noggin um i don't know if it was there when it turned into the end i think that it was the end was at the very very end of it but it was noggin um was it a canadian show no, it's Amer- it's American show. Um, pretty yeah. much everything on there was Canadian. That's what I thought. Anyways, and it was one of those shows. It was before its time. Now, I, I haven't watched it in a long time, so I can't really say like, oh, this is good representation. Like they weren't problematic. Like the L word, you know, you look back and you're like, oh, this is kind of problematic. So I can't really tell you about that. So I'm not going to say it's great representation. But at the time, it was great res- representation because um, – way before it's way before it's time 2005 think about 2005 and it's not a side character who's gay who come who's coming out or has a one episode arc you know it wasn't that it was the main girl and the first episode she's already having like some like weird feelings for this like not weird but you know i mean having these strange feelings that she's never felt before for this girl that she's just met that's like the you know the troublemaker girl that has talked about being with other girls. Like it was the main character and the other main character. Like, if you think about it a lot, like I can't think of a lot of shows that passed the- um, Bechdel test. Bechdel test, I was about to say the Kinsey mm-hmm. scale. But the Bechdel <laughs> test, um, that's the next, or that's another episode we talk about. But anyways, the <laughs> Bechdel test, like where that there's two women or all women in a, in a scene that are not talking about men. And that show a lot of the times passes it because they're like talking about each other. Like they, the mm-hmm. two main characters get together. That's like spoiler alert, but it's over a course of three seasons, they get together and out, you know, whatever. I recommend you watch it um, for some, I think it was 2015, I mean, 2005, what was that mm-hmm. 16 years ago? Wait, that's not that, 16 oh, no. years ago. Wait, wait, 2015? Yeah, no, six, wait, 16 yeah. 16 no. years ago? Ain't, uh, ain't no way 16 years ago. <laughs> Wait, 2015? No, I think it is. No, 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 no. 16 no, years ago. Yes, it's 16 years ago. No, it wasn't because yeah. 2025. No, 16 is... years ago. I said I started when I was 11, oh, sixth grade. 2005. I'm 27 now. Yeah, that is. Anyways, years ago. Um, putting my age out there. 
in <laughs> 16 years ago. And imagine, like, today they still have to queer bait, like, people to watch shows. And, like, the, you know, like, they still have the one episode arcs. And we have, like, shows that are specifically queer, like Pose and whatever. But um, this was in 2005. And they, and one thing I like about South of Nowhere, if you look into, like, if you, they, they've gone to, like, Comic Cons and stuff since then, since the show is over. And they've talked about how they fought for a lot of the scenes, like, the kiss scene. Like, that was, like, too racy for the channel. So they fought for the kiss scene. They fought for, like, it wasn't, like, a sex scene, but, like, I, I don't really, actually, I don't really remember if there was a sex scene. But, like, you know, like, they could show a man and a woman doing that. So it was, like, it's, it was, they really, really fought for everything on that show. And um, it was a pinnacle staple for my junior high experience. Even though, like, you got to, like, know that in that time, I was so deep in the closet, I didn't know I was in the closet. Like, I watched it. Okay, so the premise of the show, there's like three people, main people. The main girl that moves to LA, her family moves to LA. She meets this other girl who's bi. And the other girl has an ex-boyfriend that's kind of always in the mix. So there's two girls and a guy. And um, throughout the three seasons, the relationships between those three intermix. The intermix, (laughs) there's a lot of overlap passing around and like they're, you know what i mean <laughs> this one's with this one and this one's so they're both they're both not lesbians they're both like queer somewhere on the spectrum of, of queerness that they both like women and, and men but mm. like the ultimate ship is ashley and spencer the two girls but like anyways so a lot of i know a lot of people who watch the show but they justified their straightness because aiden the guy was really good looking. Even me, I was like, oh yeah, he's so cute. I mean, he is really cute. He is really cute. Look it up. I don't know how he looks now. But fun fact, the main girl and the main guy are married in real life and have kids. Hmm. And they're still friends with the other girl. But anyways, I don't know where I'm going with this. Um, <laughs> I didn't really think this through. But it's, it's, one, of those, <laughs> it's one of those things that's like, it was necessary for these new shows to come out. Like Mm -hmm. it was scandalous to have these two girls kissing and they barely showed it. I don't even think it was like the back of her head or her hand was covering the the kiss, but it was just like, I didn't know how monumental it was until you look back and you're like, oh shoot. That like, they really did something like, you know. At the time it came, it coming out, like it was one of those shows that it was like, oh, like that's for, you know, older teens. And yeah, the content was the con, but it's not for the queerness. It was just for the content of it. It, it was for the content. Um, it, it was a little bit more on the adult side, just because it's dealing with like, you know, more complex relationships, you know, and r- romantic relationships that like most- Not just that, know. there was school shooting, teen pregnancy, drug addiction to um, pain, pain pills, yeah. Um, I think, I don't know if he got into a gang. I don't think he got into a gang, but he was, he was, he was strung out for a while. Um, (laughs) um, father died. I don't know if there was any kind of trigger warning. I don't know if there was any self harm. I think there was later seasons. There was a lot of stuff. It literally was the, the queer focus Degrassi. Is what okay. I was saying because I loved Degrassi at the time. At that time, Degrassi was still up there, and I would watch South of Nowhere because it was the same channel. But South of Nowhere was focused more on, you know, oh, and there was adoption. They adopted a black boy, so there was a lot of different things, um, yeah. a lot of different storylines that were very like uh, important. Like I think that they were just like ahead of its time, and I wish that there was a show like that now. Not that like, not the saying that we need it, but because now they have the freedom to put those things out without all the restriction that they have. Like at the time that I, I, I think that it came out, like there was, you know, back in the nineties, it was, you know, 
kids shows and then there was like the adult stuff there wasn't really anything i mean there was a couple different shows for teens but i feel like it didn't really dive into like teen issues and not in like a kiddish way Mm -hmm. until like the early 2000s like that's when you really started to like touch on things like you know technically the degrassi junior high Oh, well, <laughs> really, Canada was yeah, doing it. No, we right. all were doing it. Canada has been doing it. I mean, that's not true, actually. We had 90210. That stuff was like real, real heavy. Yeah. Started off with the 80s and 90s of like, no, I know 210, Melrose Place and stuff like that. But it wasn't queer focused is what I'm saying. That's None of that stuff is. was queer yeah. focused. Like Degrassi had queer characters, but I felt like I almost forgot those storylines because it was so like glossed over and all of a sudden mm-hmm. like some of them weren't talked about anymore um but this one was like even if she wasn't they weren't dating or weren't dating a girl like it still was part of their identity they were still you know i don't know i can't really i don't really remember how they handled um the like the bi-ness of it all Mm -hmm. um so i don't want to record like i don't want to say like oh this is great representation and then some like queer like pan person or bi person like gets offended because i truly don't remember how they handled it and you got to remember it's 2005 i kind of wish that i would have watched it um because yeah just to know like from a bi perspective whether or not like i felt it was good representation from what i saw from how it was framed Mm -hmm. by a lot of people at that time it didn't sound like it could have been just because it, it's, a, it's a drama. It's a, you know, drama it, show. It, can, so, it didn't sound like it was good, good representation? It, it didn't sound that way. Only be, it was it was good for drama, but because mm-hmm. there's not a lot of representation out there that's solid, that shows healthy bisexual relationships where the, you know, p- multiple people or one person's proudly bisexual, like they didn't have that already. Mm-hmm. So they couldn't, you know, play around with the, the more dramatic stuff. So a lot of people's first encounter with bisexuality was this scandalous, you know, like not really... Uh, because it's really all about consent and communication and from what i'm gathering even in you know hindsight like from you thinking about it um like i'm sure that there was like a lot more miscommunication not like a healthy- say there was like actually i don't know if there was cheating i have to go and watch this well, you again. didn't you didn't mention cheating no but and i think it was the parents the biggest, but that's one of the biggest concerns like with bisexuality that like mm-hmm. the bisexual person is gonna cheat so for something for a show that's so dramatic that's going to touch on those common soap opera things mm-hmm. it's going to play into a stereotype that you know but don't you want to get to a point where it's we if do the storyline is cheating if the storyline is cheating the storyline is unhealthy or toxic behavior don't you want to get to a point where um it's not like this is a bi stereotype it's just these are characters that are going through everyday relationships. We do want to do that, but we're not there at that point where we can, right. you know, do that. And other people see like, okay, I know that's not always the thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like we always show one race doing something that yeah. people already see or think that they do. That's not good because they don't see anything else. Like okay, My homework now is to watch it and see if this even, because honestly, I can't remember how yeah. it's handled. <laughs> But I loved Ashley. The girl played Mandy Musgraves played Ashley. I loved Ashley so much, you guys. And I convinced myself that I liked Aiden. But also, I love them as a couple. Those two together. So they're so beautiful together. <laughs> like they're so like it's a beautiful couple. You know what I'm saying? But I mm-hmm. loved Ashley. Her character and Mandy, like the 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 actress. But just mm-hmm. like. I don't know, just like great allies because they go, they still go like the Comic Cons, like still, like the show's been over. Like they went and they did like this, um, they fundraised for like a, um, uh, like a musical movie. It had nothing to do with the show, but it was still those two, the two main girls in it. Like, and they like they still do a bunch of different things in the like community. Um, I don't really know how they identify, but. Um, but just the I fact mean, that they're yeah it's supportive of like yeah. just there's there's certain people who I feel like they do it and they're like okay I don't want to be typecasted in that and they like get out like they don't want anything to do with that like I feel like a Catherine Heigl like she wouldn't want to be painted as 
a, a queer movie actress. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> since she did that, like that, that I still couldn't watch that movie she was in. What is it called? I don't even know what you're talking about. The one with her and Alexis Bledel. Like she's getting married, and I didn't watch it, but people described it to me. She was getting married. Maybe we could talk about this later. She was getting married and like soon, and she didn't tell her parents that she was getting married to a girl. Oh, that's awesome. So the whole movie is them like being like slightly, I don't know if it's slightly or homophobic or like really like upset. But the whole point is like, yeah, I would be upset not because you're gay, but like, why haven't you told us? Like yeah. literally the wedding is like in a month or something. I don't know. It's like, it was really soon. And I guess in the movie, like there's no chemistry between her and Alexis Bledel, which, and we know Alexis Bledel can play a gay character. We know mm-hmm. it in um, Handmaid's Tale, that girl can play gay character if you don't remember who alexis bladell is it's um uh, rory from rory the- from gilmore girls but anyways so i guess they like had no chemistry and like they shared one kiss at the end like they barely like interacted like romantically it just was like more of the family's reaction to them finding out she was gay hmm. i don't know so anyways like you know she doesn't want to be tight i feel like she i don't know if she regrets that but like wasn't a good movie. I don't think her whole heart was in that. Because uh, mm-hmm. Catherine Heifel could act. So yeah. I don't know why she was doing that. But anyways. But like, you know, people who who really care about the craft, like a Rachel, what's her name? Rachel Weiss. Mm-hmm. Um, um, like a Kate Blanchett. Um, who's another one <laughs> that um, presents himself as straight. I don't know what their identity is, but like yeah. they do a gay character well. What's the other girl's name? Oh, uh, I can't think of her name. I don't know why I want to say Deborah Messing, but it's not Deborah Messing. She's in that, <laughs> uh, The Kids is All Right. She's always in all those movies. I know you're talking about. What's um, her name? I forgot her name. Does her name start with an R? I couldn't tell I you. I have my phone. Um, oh. I, I can see the cover of the, the movie, yeah. them on the, the bed or whatever, or was the couch or the bed or whatever. Like, Headline. It's one of those things like when you hear people not knowing what they're talking about and you're like yelling. <laughs> I think it's also a song. Julianne Moore. Julianne, Julianne Moore. Moore. She is an ally of an ally. Like, every, I swear, like every other movie she does, she's a queer per- person. And I ain't even mad <laughs> her taking them roles. Take them. If you do it well, go and like take it. Why am I going to say no? Like, do what you got to do. Um, <laughs> No, yeah. To bring us back to the start, I guess, of the episode, um, the television show South of Nowhere, it, I, I think it was good for its time. We don't know for you don't sure. Think it's good anymore. I, I, I even can't if it was stop. problematic, you don't think it, it, it served its purpose in the time. I, I think it served its purpose at the time because it even opened up the conversation to young people to explore that. Had I watched that, maybe I would have came to that conclusion sooner rather than I sure didn't, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it really, it, we talked about it before that like, um, it wasn't until later on in high school. If Aiden was wasn't watching. so cute, maybe I would have realized. Well, <laughs> that's something that we have to talk to him about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> him and Tom Welling, for some reason, it's like the same. Tom it's Welling. the same typecast. Okay, it so really Tom is. Welling, um, mm-hmm. the guy who plays Aiden in South of Nowhere, the guy in John Tucker Must Die. If you look up <laughs> those three guys, they are literally the same person in different. They really they're just the plain. No offense to them, plain white guys, brown, like dark hair, and like very conventionally attractive. Yeah. I either liked that or I liked someone who was so feminine that I didn't even realize they're feminine like yeah when Justin Bieber first came out and his hair not when he was like looked like a child but when he <laughs> was in his peak lesbian age really that lesbian. was Justin Bieber my first celebrity crush was Aaron Carter there was a l- little boy um this was really getting off track but this <laughs> this boy in when I was younger and my I shouldn't there's this boy <laughs> it doesn't matter now but I was, this, I was watching this like, okay, there was a boy in my dance class, and that's very specific. There wasn't a lot of boys in my dance class. There was a boy in my, I'm going to be very specific, in my sixth grade class, and I want to say there was a boy in junior high. And I can probably, if I picked up all, the, like, put their pictures together, they look very similar, similar to Aaron Carter. Like, a very short, small, cute, like, blonde, short, like, blonde, buzz cut, 
boy that was like very feminine. That was my crush, like my type of crush as a kid, which is so funny because like, if you translate into a girl, like that's not my type at all. But I like, like, but it was funny that those are the type or celebrities. It was like a Tom Welling, Aiden from South of Nowhere, uh, Jesse, Jesse, Jesse Metcalf from um, uh, John Tucker Must Die. Those men confused me because I really had a crush on the, their, their co-stars. They confused me because I thought I had a crush on them, but I had a crush on the co-stars. You can't tell me Lois was like, I loved Lois. This is really getting off topic. Let me roll it back. <laughs> Lois though. But no, I like I said, I think South of Nowhere <laughs> did its purpose for you to even start thinking about things other than, you know, just straightness, you know. Yes. Trigger warning yeah. though, one thing I do remember about that show is there's a really bad parent reaction to them being gay. Like it was such a huge thing. It was like a cliffhanger. I remember, I don't know if it was like the next week there was another episode or like it was the end of the season. I can't really remember like that, but I remember it was this huge cliffhanger. They're, they're kissing in the room, in the bedroom and the door is closed and the like, conservative mom comes in. I don't know why I put quotes, she was conservative. Mom comes in, barges mm-hmm. in and yanks the other girl's hair, pulls wow. her back. Like it was one of those things that they filmed like in one go, I don't know how many films, like, you know what I mean? But yanked her, like literally, like almost throw her down the stairs, like threw her out of the house. So like, it's like this big, it was like this big thing. It was like, I remember seeing that. And like, I mean, it doesn't stay like that forever. Like that relationship, it does go through its ups and downs. But I just remember that was the peak thing. It was like, I don't know what season it was, uh, end of season one, or I, I really can't remember, but it was such a big thing. That that was like, it was that moment was the why is your dick on the dead girl's phone moment? <laughs> like that was like the peak moment where like if they if it was at that time it'd been like where were you when you saw that Ashley get dragged? Like it was oh crazy. Like it was traumatic for a lot of folks. But like yeah. I didn't have like Tumblr or like Twitter to like have that conversation like with people. Yeah. Like it was really just like interviews or whatever they were talking about. But like, that's why later on, like YouTube was like a big thing, like people watching clips and then talking about it. But like, that was like, it was a huge thing. Like there was things that you just didn't talk about. Like they're in LA and they're more cons- like more liberal area. And they're from like, I think they were from Ohio or something or from somewhere like that. So they moved to LA and then, you know, her daughter was supposed to be this straight girl. And all of a sudden she meets this girl, this LA girl. And like, you know, she goes to LA and meets an LA girl. And like, all of a sudden she's making out with her. Like, so she's like, you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. so it it was a process. One thing I did like, I mean, it was very, very homophobic, but one thing I liked about it is like, it shows the queer person that you take a long time to accept yourself, to understand yourself to know what you're feeling, but also the people who you're telling, your parents or your friends or whatever, have to take a second to readjust and whether it's accept or whatever, like you don't need their exception. You don't need them them to like, okay it, but for them to readjust their brain of like, okay, this person's not straight or like a parent, it's different too, because they, 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 for some reason, they plan out your life. They have kids and they're like, oh, I can't wait for them to get married. Have kids and, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. and for that to not that they can't get married and whatever, have kids when they're gay, but they have this picture of what it's going to look like. And so it was a good thing to like, you see that she needed time to get over her biases and her homophobia to readjust her mind to accept her daughter. And then, so, so like, it was like a good thing like that. Cause you could really hate that character if you wanted mm. to. But like, I remember, I don't think I hated her at the end. You know what I mean? Like it was one of those things like you need growth, you need some change. So it could be traumatic to people, you know, 10, 11 years old watching that thing. Like I was, that was crazy. But like, I think that it's, if you're going to show it, show it all. You know what I mean? Raw and whatever. And they just, they fought for everything that they put in there. I think that, I don't know if the, I'm pretty sure the creator was queer. Cause then she went on and had that, that musical but I don't know. I'm gonna do my research, y'all. We'll probably maybe we'll do a part two after I watch it. There we maybe go. We'll do an update of the show <laughs> after I 
watch it again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. But oh, you guys watch it with me. Watch it. Like, I think you could just look up South of Nowhere, like, full episodes. Now, be careful with those, like, links, with those, like, um, like, uh, sketchy. Like, like, viruses. That's, I can't think. But, like, you can, I, before, I think I watched it a few times, um, like, I've watched all the episodes like years ago, all online. It's not like on a, I don't think it's like on the end or whatever. It could be. Check it out. Look it up. <laughs> watch it and comment and tell me if you're watching, if you remember it um, or if you're watching it with me. Cool. Anyways, do you have anything else to add? No, I think that's Jessica. good. I think, I think that's it. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> all right. With that, um, thank you so much for listening to the Chris Sister podcast. Uh, I'm Jasmine and. Why are you saying and? And I'm Natasha. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.